This is Zach from Save Data, and you're watching Behind the Alias. Boom that you saw come was mm -hmm. from one specific series, so the Zelda the, the Zelda Dungeon Music Analysis. In the middle of December, we had about 3,000 subscribers, and now, about a month and a half later, we have 21,000 subscribers. And I'm like, come on, guys, can you f click on this video? I swear it's good. Not too long ago, you rebranded from Around the Monitor to Save mm -hmm. Data. And before we start talking about the actual content that's in uh, on your channel, why don't mm -hmm. you start by telling us why the rebrand? Yeah, so originally, uh, I wanna say it was August of 2018 was when I decided to start doing a podcast. Uh, you know, just very much like, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a white guy in my late 20s. I guess I should have a podcast. Too. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I was super into like video games, like the gaming industry, news. Uh, actually, my, my background is in acting. Uh, my degree is in acting. But I was kind of wanting to, to transition more into like seeing if I could do stuff in gaming. And I was like, well, a podcast is a great way to start. It's very non-commitment, like non-big commitment. And uh, it can just be me talking with my friends about games. And so started this podcast called Around the Monitor. It's very much an on-the-nose rip off of ESPN's Around the Horn, which is a sports news talk show where every they, they, they have a host and then four guests. And basically they talk through the day's news and sports and every time they make like a good quip or a joke or like a good point, the, the host can give them a point and uh, like an actual score. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the show wins. And it's like, cool, this is our like number one analyst for this day, yada, yada. I said, let's do that, but for video game news. Fast forward to this year and it was like, okay, we do this podcast. We have another podcast. We have a Let's Play series uh, where we play Ace Attorney games with an actual lawyer. We do a ton of video essays. We, we, we try to get like three video essays a month out now. And to just go by the name of the one podcast wasn't really kind of what our whole brand is. And it also was like, it, it's it's not the easiest name to roll off the tongue, like around the monitor. Mm. Uh, but we we started like talking. So the, the channel is not just me. It's it's the people who are on the podcast. It, it definitely... We, we, we joke that we have like an extended cinematic universe of people who like help us out with our content and stuff like that. But the core group of it is like five people. And we were talking like just like workshopping names, throwing stuff out there. And then like as soon as we as, as soon as there was one that like two or three of us liked, we'd be like, OK, does this name exist already? Is there somebody that has this branded? And so we, we got it down to like a couple. But the one that we always kept coming back to was Save Data. Cause it was like, oh, that's that's like it's really short. It's two four letter words. Like on a on a logo, it would probably look good. And then uh, we we started getting more serious with it. And we'll probably talk about this later. But we at the end of December 2020, we we started getting like a lot of uh, uh, attention. Like our our in the middle of December, we had about 3,000 subscribers. And now, about a month and a half later, we have 21,000 subscribers. So it was very much like an overnight, like, oh, shit, we we, we, have, a, we have a bigger audience now. We, we we were saying, like, oh, before we hit 5,000 subs, we'll, we'll, rebrand. we'll, we'll do the rebrand. <laughs> that went and well. And then, like, we, yeah, we blinked and we're like, okay, well, we have 15,000 now. We should probably rebrand, like, yesterday. And so that, like, super accelerated us trying to do that. And it was, like such a wild January was an extremely wild month of like trying to do our normal schedule of producing content while also like contacting like somebody to, to, to create a brand for us, like a, a new logo, uh, you know, prepping all of the social media accounts to suddenly like switch over to the new name, realizing stuff like all the time of like, Oh shoot, we didn't make a new channel trailer. Okay. Well, we've got three days before we do the rebrand. So like, how can we make this work and just all that stuff. And, and it was such a, I don't know if I've ever felt so much pressure. <laughs> Overwhelmed, eh? Like, like the day of the rebrand, because we were also dropping a new video. Uh, the, the plan was to, to do a YouTube premiere of the new video. And then he, I, I basically, we, we just tried premieres for the first time that month. And I was like, oh, this is a cool system because basically you put up a video and your whole audience can watch it live with you. And then like there's a chat so they can type in the chat. You can respond to them in, in the chat and it, it 
definitely like adds to a sense of community with, with the people watching your content, which is cool, but then you can bounce them from watching that premiere into a live stream. And we, a few times a year, we like to do like a big live stream. That's like, you know, seven to 10 to 12 hours long. And we'll play games with the community. Uh, we, we do what's called, well, it's, it's not really an original concept, but we do video game Jeopardy, which is just, you know, video game themed Jeopardy questions. But we get people from the community, uh, from like our team to play the game. And then the people who are watching in the chat, like vote on who they think is going to win. And if that person wins, like we have a bunch of steam codes to give away. It, it just, it's like a big event and we have a lot of fun with it. And it was like, okay, we're going to do the, the video, bounce them into the live stream show the new channel trailer, like the explanation of why we're changing the name and then like stream for seven hours on top of that. And like right before three, which was when we were, we were starting the video, like I felt like my heart was going to explode <laughs> inside my chest. Cause I was like, I have never been this stressed out in my life of like, you know, technical issues could happen or maybe they don't like this new video or maybe, uh, like, People are like, oh, why are you rebranding? Who is this channel? I never subscribed to this channel. Uh, unsubscribe or something. Like just a bunch of things floating through my mind. And thankfully it went really well. Our audience seems really receptive to it. So uh, being on the other side is definitely <laughs> a much more positive feeling. But it was it was stressful. It was it was really wild. Yeah, I I bet it was, and I have so many follow up questions. But I feel like they all fall into the let's chat and the struggles and the the. So I think I'm gonna hold off on totally, following totally, up with totally. that. But <laughs> as you're talking, I'm like, I want to ask this. I want to ask that. And I'm like, you know what? I think it fits better in the next one. So sure. Uh, uh, so most of, so this boom that you saw come was mm -hmm. from one specific series so the Zelda the, the Zelda dungeon music analysis how yes. did you come up with that idea so that's uh, a <laughs> kind of a funny story like uh, it was New York City Comic Con 2019 I was talking to my friend who's also one of the partners in the channel and I was like I have an idea for a new video what do you think about this and I was like, I just want to gush about why I think the Forest Temple theme in Ocarina of Time is so good. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah, that sounds fun. And I, I did it. And it was, you know, at, at the time, I want to say we had like less than 400 subscribers. Like we were babies at this time. And that video came out. And I think it was the first video on the channel that got like more than a thousand views because it just was like, it's a more simple concept. It's everybody loves Zelda. You know, I could go post it on different subreddits or Facebook groups and, and people would latch onto it from there. And then after seeing that that did well, I was like, huh, what if I talked about the fire temple? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I started doing research just for it. And I was like, oh, there's actually a lot I can talk about on this. I'll do that. And, and it was so noncommittal. It was like, all right, well, it's just the next thing in the game. Uh, you know, maybe people will like this one in my head. I was like, oh, they're not going to like this one as much. Uh, I don't even like the fire temples music as much as the forest temple, uh, forest temple definitely is, is my favorite dungeon music in the franchise, but, uh, it, it started as just, I, I wanted to gush about the forest temple and then it became, okay, okay well, I guess I'm going to talk about music theory and I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, the architecture of the dungeon or like why it was created to look this way and, and just kind of like layering in like different fan theories online and stuff like that and trying to keep it more. I, I think the thing I like about this series is that I add more jokes into it than mm -hmm. my other like more serious kind of documentary style stuff because I feel, I don't know, like, like the first, the, the, the Forest Temple video, I felt more comfortable making dumb jokes in it and that has been so nice to do this franchise because I'll just sit there and make uh, like, oh, here's a here's a Snoop Dogg joke for for some reason, <laughs> or like, I'll I'll Photoshop Link's face onto a clip from Bad Boys Two, and like that that is funny for some reason, and yeah. but it's <laughs> and, it's and also your content, right? Because no one's ever done this. At least I've never seen anything that's kind of like that. It or you're you're totally right. It's it's weird. It's not totally original. Like there are channels that do music theory analysis right. of video game music, but like the way music you're theory. doing it, though, because exactly, you, it's, yeah, it's it's still pretty vague. I know you you name it uh, dungeon music analysis, mm -hmm. but I watched I think the latest one, and I have the worst memory on earth. I don't remember the last one. What's the dungeon <laughs> on like, the last one that you? Uh, I, Great Great Bay Temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
That that's the one story with the all the sewage, all the the the, the yes, sewer system yeah, and all that it's, stuff. It's the and water, I, yeah. I started watching this, and at first you're like, okay, I'm in it for the music, and you start watching it. And why am I learning about the sewage system? <laughs> and then you keep watching, it and you're like, this. Why can I? I can't stop watching this. I don't know why, <laughs> but I just can't stop watching it. It's actual. It's funny. It's interesting. I'm learning shit that has nothing to do with games at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's very original. Uh, at least that's how it made me feel the first time I watched uh, a, a couple of your videos. Well, th well thank you. Uh, it's it's definitely been. Uh, not, not to get too much into like the inside baseball or anything like that, but like there definitely has been some YouTube comments that have been like, why, why are you talking about, uh, water treatment plants? Like <laughs> I came here to, to hear you talk about the music. I'm like, okay, I see where you're coming from. I do put the sheet music in the thumbnail. I get it. Like that's, that's probably what you're coming here for. I do have a timestamp in the description if you mm -hmm. just want to skip to the music, but the series is called dungeon and like design yeah, yeah. and music analysis so like I, I think it was was in the second one in the fire temple video where i started talking about some of the architecture and i definitely got way bigger into it in the water temple video and so there was a certain point where i just kind of consciously was like all right moving forward i think both the architecture and the music play into each other so importantly yeah and i i i, I married them w whether or not <laughs> everyone is happy with that but I, I, it's the same thing where like I've gotten so many comments that say the opposite, where they're like, I love that you talk about the yeah. design and the music. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Like that's validating, but it's it's definitely like a weird, weird push and pull of like, oh, am I doing the right thing? Yeah, I think doing both gives you more content though. And, and also mm -hmm. it's not necessarily things that people think about. The people might have played that mm -hmm. temple four times and have never realized what the hell they were in. <laughs> I've totally. never realized what I was in. And then I, I watched yeah. this video you're saying, and I went, wait a minute huh <laughs> there's a logic behind the temple right right and that's that's i totally get those comments and and it's it's very fun for me like going into this one in particular great bay i was like somebody was talking to me on on my channel's discord and being like what do you think this place even is and i was like that's a really good question and i haven't <laughs> started doing research on it but I hopefully will have an answer by the time I make this video. And, and I did like, I, I, I started getting into it. And I was like, Oh, okay. It could be like this. Like there's all these different, like, you know, references to real world things that it, I have obviously inspired it in some way. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is my take on why the game designers would have made this temple look this way. Yeah. What happens when you run out of temples? Oh, well, the good news is that at the rate I'm going with these videos, which right now I'm trying to make one a month, uh, I mean, I've got at least a few more years on this series. <laughs> um, I, I have asked the, the the community of like, hey, if I didn't talk about dungeons, what other you know areas of the game or music pieces in particular would you like me to, to do pieces on or do videos on? And the list is is infinitely long. I mean, there's there's so many songs in Zelda games. And on top of that, too, people have been like, oh, you should cover music from Metroid or you should cover metric from music from Pokemon. And I'm like, I would love to do that. Like, I'm, I'm a huge Metroid fan. I'm a huge Pokemon fan. So, like, absolutely. There's there's some people being like, uh, you should cover music from I can't remember what the most ridiculous request I got, but it was like a game that's not even like a super popular game. And I'm like, I've never played it before. I'm not the guy to do this one. Like, I, I would never want to do a video that I'm not passionate about, uh, which is uh, for me, like the process of creating any video is so much about like, am I interested in making this video? Do I think I would never do a video on something that I think somebody else has done like the definitive version of, like if, if I have something extra to say and I think it's important, I will make a video on it and I'm passionate about it. Like there has to be like a, a lot of qualifications, but thankfully right now, at least I have not found there has not been like a time longer than like two or three days where I'm like, oh God, what should my next video be? Yeah. Like, I don't have an idea. And then it, 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 something will happen and I'll be like, okay, this is it. This is what I'm going with. So then you got to outweigh passion and success at the same time. And clearly, yes. clearly <laughs> the balance is kind of tipping into the favor of those types of videos. So you said you're doing one a month, but that's where the demand is. So at one point, do you go, maybe I need to stop doing this and I need to put more in effort into that? At what point does that happen? 
So that is the million dollar question. Uh, <laughs> I literally was was talking to um, there's there's another channel that uh, I'm I'm close with the creators on, and for the longest time they were like vastly bigger than than our channel was, and now we're we're pretty neck and neck uh, because of this sudden explosion. And you know I I, I did put out a video or, or a poll on YouTube that was like, hey, why do you what what which which of our content do you like the most? and why and like one of the options was straight up i was just like hey i'm just here to watch these zelda videos because clearly <laughs> yeah. uh we, we have two of those videos i think that are over 300,000 views and like for example last month i put out a video on the history of yacht club games which i was super passionate about uh, i think it's a fantastic story i probably put over a hundred work hours into making that video and it just has over a thousand views about a month later so like it's it's hard to see that and not be like wow okay what am i doing like like is there a way i can get people to care about the other content the other on stuff. our channel yeah and and my my react my, how i feel about it now and maybe this will change maybe i'll just one day be like okay i should just sell out and become a zelda tuber <laughs> uh because that's 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 the thing like i've gotten so uh -huh. many comments that are like oh cool another new zelda tuber and i'm like now listen, <laughs> like we, we, we have 40 video essays at this point. I think it's around 40. It might actually be a few more now. And only eight of them are about this, this Zelda dungeon analysis videos. And so I'm like, okay, that's 20% of our video essays. On top of that, we have three weekly shows that we do and all this other stuff. So I'm like, that's not our main focus, but obviously, like you said, it is the most popular thing on our channel. Currently, I'm trying to to find the metric of like, what can I do to keep those fans happy while also keeping myself happy or, or creating other content that I think is genuinely interesting, which is more of this like documentary style um, games industry analysis or like stories or stuff like that, or, or just like other weird fun videos. I've, I've done one on... Um, unsolved mysteries in gaming and i i straight up do like the robert stack impression like i, I have like a, a, mm -hmm. a suit coat on and i'm like walking on like a busy street and it's like a 80s film grain over top and it, it's it's a really fascinating piece of storytelling i think that that is my main goal is i want to i want to find these interesting stories and tell them in a way that is compelling and exciting and i think the zelda dungeon analysis videos are a part of that i think they are I think it is very fun. Uh, it definitely feels like I have kind of fallen into this like weird spot. Like a lot of people are like, oh, you, you know, you should do this, this series. Like this is so exciting and, and this is what we love. But uh, <laughs> sometimes I feel like a frog because I'm like, listen, I have a degree in acting. I'm not, I'm not some music theory genius. Like usually uh, like I'll find somebody has, has made sheet music for the song and I'll, I'll use like the, the two semesters of music theory I took in college. And then on top of that, I'll, I'll like look up a few other things. It, it's so much like my, my entire style to producing content is like, it, if I don't know something, I look it up and then I figure it out. And then I add that into whatever I'm doing in this particular video. And uh, w whether that's just like, oh, hey, how do I do this visual effect in editing? Or how, what, what is this? you know, music theory thing that's happening here, do a quick Google search, do a quick, you know, YouTube search, find a video that explains this to me and then say that in my own way and put it together as a cohesive package and, and hopefully make something that is a compelling video for people to watch. Yeah. Um, but definitely there, there is, you're totally right. There is, there is kind of a, a weird balance of like what, the overwhelming majority of the people who have now subscribed to our channel want us to do and what we are committed to as a whole. I think right now the pace of doing one of these videos a month, I think is enough to satisfy people uh, and keep them sticking around. Um, if, if it changes drastically and, and suddenly I wake up tomorrow and like, oh no, I only have, you know, 5,000 subscribers because the majority of those people left because they don't want to get notifications for, you know, the 10 other videos I release a month, then maybe I'll have to reconsider it. But for right now, I, I think it, it is the combination of doing something successful and doing what makes you sane and happy. 
And it's not to say that I'm, I, I don't, I do genuinely enjoy making these Zelda videos, but it is not the only thing I want to do. It's not the ultimate goal that you fix yourself when you started working on this. It makes sense. Exactly. And, and, and also, it, it doesn't mean, it's not because your other videos aren't getting views that they're not good. <laughs> that, that's, totally, totally. And, and I, I get I get the same, same sense. And I, I was just thinking last week, I, I get CLG Cheese, the speedrunner on my show. And personally, I think the second video was the best because he opens up about a bunch of personal stuff that he doesn't really talk about anywhere else. And that's one of the videos that gets the least views. <laughs> and I'm like, come on guys, can you fucking click on this video? I swear it's good. <laughs> hey, that's it for the alias segment. Don't miss out the next segment tomorrow as we speak about the struggles of becoming a YouTuber and what we can do to make it better.